and talk a little bit about um, the bill that we are going to focus on today. Yeah. Um, so, hi, my name is Jetchen Ellis. My pronouns are uh, they, them, theirs, and she, her, hers. And I am the advocacy manager at the ACLU of South Dakota. Um, so, today we're going to be talking about um, House Bill 1076, which um, stops transgender people from obtaining a birth certificate that um, is an accurate reflection of who they are, essentially, um, which there are a lot of problems with that. It's it, it's an unconstitutional bill uh, and it has, you know, it opens transgender people up to, um, you know, a heightened risk of violence, discrimination, harassment. Um, so we're gonna get into that today. Um, and then we're also gonna be talking about uh, House Bill 12, 1217, which just dropped this morning and um, would prohibit trans, um, women from participating in women's sports uh, in South Dakota. So yeah, that's that's new and horrible. And all sorts um, of fun stuff that we get to talk mm. to you about today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so for those of you who've been on this journey with us, uh, we are coming um, over to the Senate this week um, with uh, the bill about birth certificates that will be heard on Friday at 10 a.m. Um, by the Senate Health and Human Services Committee. And uh, we've got a committee of about seven people. Um, seven people, yep. If you haven't written your senator yet uh, and written that committee, this would be a good time to do it. It's fresh on their minds. They're preparing for this hearing. So definitely would be a great idea to write your thoughts and um, your opinion about um, this bill. Yeah, if you kind of need like a sample or a guide, we do have a, um, the ACLU of South Dakota does have a uh, form that you can use on our website. And also we've posted it on our social media um, a few times where you can um, kind of take the letter that we've had as like a guide and add your own personal you know, story or any, any points that you wanted to make, um, just kind of to make it easier to collect all the emails and you know, do, um, you know, do it um, with, with a guide that way. Because you know, for some people, they've never contacted their legislators, so they might need that sample, they might need that sort of guide. So if that's something that you're interested in, we do have that form as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, why having a birth certificate that accurately reflects someone's identity is so important. Um, I will share um, quickly that uh, in South Dakota and around the country, um, under federal guidelines, you can change federal documents. Um, those documents can be changed to reflect who you are as a person. So for instance, if a transgender person would want a driver's license uh, or a passport or a new social security card, those things um, are very easily gotten uh, with the appropriate um, changes. So uh, do you wanna add anything to that, Jet? Uh, yeah, so I mean, having those inconsistent documents, um, you know, on the uh, on the the federal and the state level, um, can can uh, is is a huge issue because it forces transgender people to disclose their status as trans, which you know, first of all, that is something that is personal and is something that transgender people, you know, have. That's, that should be their choice, whether or not they disclose. Um, <clears throat> but it's also a constitutional violation. Uh, it's a violation of their constitutional right to privacy uh, because they're being forced to share their um, you know, private medical information whenever they are um, presenting their birth certificate. Um, so, and you have to do that for a, you know, a number of, of different things. Uh, you know, when you are um, getting a new job you know, for the purposes of payroll, uh, when you're applying for a certain housing, um, you know, when you're trying to access, you know, these essential needs, these things that all people need, um, it can be a huge, um, <clears throat> it can be a huge issue. And 
it can um, it can lead to you know uh, a denial of services. It can lead to discrimination. It it makes people who are you know um, it makes employers or um, you know government officials who are like looking at these documents. It can make them suspicious. So it opens it can make it suspicious because they're like, are you who you say you are essentially? Which is kind of the core of what's wrong with this is that trans people trans people are who they say they are and they need documents that reflect that. And um, there, I mean, there's a ton of different, there's a ton of different issues, um, but that forced disclosure is, it really open, opens transgender people up to, um, you know, violence and it's, it's completely unacceptable and completely backwards. It really is. And there's a very, um, it's already known that um, trans people are discriminated against and marginalized. Um, and this just opens it up for more. So the process to amend a birth certificate is actually um, something that a judge decides. So uh, as, a, as a transgender person, you uh, can fill out paperwork and have a hearing. Uh, and um, that's the process uh, right now with in South Dakota, that's what you go through. So do you feel that it's important for judges to take direction from our legislature on things like this, Jet? No, not at all. This entirely takes away judges' discretion to look at the facts in front of them and make decisions, which is literally judges jobs like it is completely routine for judges to have you know um different interpretations of uh of things and, and to kind of take that discretion away from judges is um you know completely ridiculous the um you know when we talk about you know uniform policy when we talk about the need for judges to um have you know a uniform understanding so that they can make these decisions if we want if we want a uniform policy we can have one that you know clearly affirms transgender people and and makes it clear that that is um you know uh that that is the process you know um the way that it, it you know the way that it it currently is right now is that you can have your birth certificate amended and your original one will be sealed away. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a process that transgender people in South Dakota have, have been through with judges. And that's something that judges have decided, you know, in all but what three cases in the past few years. And those three cases were um, largely procedural things as well. So. Exactly. So I think that it's important to talk about the real life implications that these things have on transgender individuals. Um, I am the executive director of the Transformation Project and the Transformation Project Advocacy Network. We're a South Dakota nonprofit, two nonprofits actually. We, um, we do walk alongside trans people and um, every year when legislative session comes around, it's really hard for trans people. It's um, depressing. Um, so many feel like, you know, I'm not welcomed as I am in my own home state. Uh, and so a lot of, um, just a lot of sadness and anxiety uh, so can you talk a little bit about why legislators keep introducing discriminatory legislation like this one? That's a great question. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know the answer for sure because, well, I would do it's because they want to discriminate against transgender people, just kind of full stop. And because there's um, a ton of misinformation and a ton of, um, you know, Susan, you, you, um, you connect legislators with, um, trans people across and trans people and their families, uh, you know, across the state, you know, you know, pretty much firsthand how so many of these legislators don't have relationships with transgender people. So there's a ton of 
misinformation. There's a ton of fear of the unknown, essentially. And there are so many different media narratives, you know, across the nation, truthfully, that, you know, can contribute to like the demonization and stigmatization of transgender people. So it's like, I don't know why our legislators are so obsessed with transgender people when we have it when there it's not an issue and everybody has the right to live freely and openly as who they are I, I I couldn't I I don't know it's it's deeply disappointing as you know as a non-binary person it is like it's painful it's painful to see this weird obsession with transgender people and, it, and it's painful to see your representatives and your state speak against you, you know, come against you so hard so often. And I'm new to South Dakota, you know, so I haven't been here the past six years where it has just been a barrage of this anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ and two-spirit legislation. But like, I don't know, it's so deeply felt, you know. Um, would you kind of want to speak to the, your experience connecting legislators? Sure, yeah, legislators? well, um, nationwide, um, there's a stat out there that says that 80% of people haven't met a trans person. Mm. And I really think it's higher in South Dakota. Mm. Because what I find is when we're talking to legislators that most of them have not connected with a, a trans individual or um, a family with a trans kid. So we definitely want to connect people so that they can they can get the the personal relationship built, so that they can see that these kinds of bills um, really do affect real South Dakotans, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully um, will develop a relationship with the, those families and those people. So yeah, we're, um, we're definitely um, fighting an uphill battle. Um, and I, you know, in a minute, we'll talk a little bit about the other bills that were introduced this morning. Um, but let's finish up um, with some, one more question about this. Can you tell us, um, Jet, about, you know, if if HB 1076 is passed, the ACLU has um, threatened to sue the state of South Dakota. Can you tell us like why this is unconstitutional and have cases like this been tried in other states and have they been successful or have they failed? Yeah. Um, so if this if this ends up passing we are gonna challenge it in court because it is unconstitutional. It is a violation of transgender people's right to uh, freedom of speech, to uh, privacy and to um, equal protection under the law. So um, it imposes the state's view of a person's sex um, on transgender people when they make this um, you know, when, if they pass this, you know, it, that's what it will do. So, um, <clears throat> uh, the first amendment protects against, um, uh, compelled speech, and this would be compelling transgender people to, um, you know, uh, put forth a message, put forth, uh, an idea of who they are that's unwanted and untrue. And, um, so that's, that's a huge issue. It's also a violation of their privacy rights. Um, for what we talked about before with the forced disclosure of private medical information. Um, and then it's, uh, it's the, the biggest, the, the biggest issue is that it's a violation of their right to equal protection under the law. Um, so, uh, you know, because transgender people uh, are the focus of this bill, because it is targeted towards them. Uh, they're the only people, um, well, so sex is the only thing on a birth certificate that you can't amend with this, with this bill. And transgender people are the only people who can't amend their sex. So it is entirely targeted at the trans community. And that's a violation of their right to equal protection. Um, you know, it, it's discrimination. It, it's just plain and simple. 
Um, and to pretend that it's not <laughs> targeted at trans people uh, when it so clearly is all of the context of the hearing, uh, you know, both on the floor and in the committee, what the proponents have to say about it makes it clear that it's about trans people. It's not about any, any it's not going to affect anyone else. And it, it's an attack, it's a discriminatory attack. Thank you, Jet. Yeah, we're seeing uh, legislation come through that doesn't say the word transgender. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, maybe you read a bill and it looks perfectly normal and it looks like, oh, that sounds interesting. Maybe I could get behind that. Um, we, uh, we have another bill, both Jet and I woke up this morning to um, text, very many texts about another bill that was just introduced. And, uh, you know, the bill, we'll talk about that here, but I think the bill is called something like fairness in women's sports. Well, mm. that, you know, that sounds like, well, yeah, I mean, we want women's sports to be fair, right? But mm -hmm. when you read, the bill, uh, and when you look into it, um, it doesn't say the word transgender, uh, but if you read between the lines, um, let's talk about what that bill is really about. And um, I don't even know the number of it. Jack, can you? I'm pretty sure it's 1217. There's also another one with a similar number that we are concerned about, but I don't know if we're ready to talk about like, <laughs> quite yet. So I'm pretty sure it's 1217. I'm sorry. I only, I'm just getting, yes. Yep. Okay. It is okay. 1217, the trans sports bill. All right. So Jet, do you want to share just for a few minutes what that, what that looks like, what that's about, who that is targeting? Yeah. So that that's targeting transgender people and, and transgender women in particular. Um, that uh, making it so that they can't participate in uh, sports that uh, on, on teams that would affirm their gender. Um, you know, so trans women won't be able to participate in women's sports, trans men won't be able to participate in men's sports. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's once again, that, that discriminatory attack. It's entirely about transgender people. I think the point that you made, you know, Susan, about how like sometimes these things they have like, titles or information that we feel like we can get behind, but there are these further implications, there are these issues, there's so much kind of lurking under the surface of what this bill is. And in this bill, that um, that thing that's lurking under the surface, and I, it's very thinly under the surface, I'd say it's, it's uh, you know, um, you know, it's, it's not particularly well concealed, is that animus and that, um, that attack on transgender people. Um, so <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's another attack. It's another, another bill we need to work on, right? Yeah. And, and, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you. No, I, I was just saying we're seeing this bill or a similar bill around the country right now. Yes. And we're seeing it in other states, um, even states near South Dakota. We saw this in North Dakota and Montana as well. Uh, so um, what do you think is going on with, with the sports issue? Um, you know, I, that's a tough call because yeah. like in terms of like what, what is really going on. I can't help but feel like it's a distraction from real issues and it's, you know, people trying to, you know, virtue signal and whip up supporters of these bills to look away from the things that are really important and, um, you know, focus on, on non-issues entirely. Sure. You know? um, what do you, what do you think? Well, yeah, um, you know, <laughs> the South Dakota High School Athletic Association um, created a policy years ago that allows trans kids to play in sports in high school. Um, so they've already um, 
their their organization um, has already cleared all of this up, and um, it's been policy for several years. Um, so I don't know, but uh, you know, it, it seems to me that there are some issues that really need to be tackled this year um, in the South Dakota State Legislature and bills like what we're seeing that will be heard on Friday and this um, this new bill, it seems to me like um, not a good use of time for legislators. There are some really serious issues happening right now, some really serious things that need to be discussed. And uh, I, I don't, I don't like that they're having to spend their time on this. So it's frustrating. And I think that like what you said um, oh, just a little bit ago about how this has been, you know, this has already been figured out by the um, high school um, athletics association. Like, I think that's part of it is that these bills are a reaction to transgender people you know, being um, like gaining in civil rights and you know equal protections, and it's it's a reaction to to those, that progress that we're making because that continues to happen, and not just to transgender people, but you know, whenever we make um, anti-racist progress, whenever we make progress for marginalized people, there's this huge backlash trying to keep marginalized people down. So it's you know, it's, it's really tough. Like, yeah. I, so I, I think what you said about like how it's already been figured out, that's, that's a part of it, you know, like. Yeah, <sighs> it's already done. <laughs> so we should probably wrap up our time here. Oh my God, I that think, flew by. I know it really did. It was, I could talk to you forever and we, we could talk for hours. We do talk uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we will be best friends by the end of session, that's for sure. Yeah, but yep. I would uh, let's wrap it up. Um, do our legislators actually listen to their constituents? You know, maybe maybe you haven't reached out on a bill yet. Maybe you're thinking, is it even worth my time? Do I like? Are they even going to read my email? Are they even going to take my phone call? Um, you know, this is a question someone had asked, and, and I really do think that the majority of legislators um, do look forward to hearing from their constituents because they represent you. So if you're in a district um, and you're concerned about something, send a message to your legislators, but also send a message to the people on the committee that are hearing specific bills that you're interested in. Um, if you're wanting to talk to a senator or a representative, go ahead and give them a phone call. Their numbers are listed on the website. Oh my goodness, it, you know, you can get a hold of them very easily. Leave a message, they'll call you back. Um, legislators are there to represent you and your voice needs to be heard. So uh, yesterday, um, uh, 18 year old trans um, young man and myself talked to a legislator on the phone and just asked some great questions and he asked some great questions and um, I'll tell you what it's it pays to get your voice out there um, for what you're passionate about whichever bill it is and we know that people on here are passionate about all sorts of different bills there are so many <laughs> But let your voice be heard because you are important and you are a big part of this state. That's not so beautiful. <laughs> well, I think we will wrap it up here and um, we appreciate you all joining us today. And who knows, maybe we'll have to do this again um, in the future. You well, all have you. a wonderful afternoon. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.